Hey guys, welcome to Full Sun Living. Today we're going to talk about Between Sundays, Chapter 3, Kindness. Yep. Live in kindness. Okay, let's send it. Let's send it. Everybody, attention class. Um, welcome to Full Sun Living with your host, Nate Thompson. And, Ethan Bricker. Yep. Nate wrote a book. Wrote a book. If you didn't catch that in the last two episodes, <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Yep. Um, it's on Amazon. You can pick it up. It's 10 bucks. I'd appreciate it. Some good stuff in there. I think you'll enjoy it. Yep. So the last two episodes, we went through chapter one and chapter two. Mm-hmm. We went through communion and yep. Bible study. Now we're talking about live in kindness. Yep. Yep. Chapter three. Chapter so, three. Follow along with us. It's going to be a good day today. Let's get into okay. it. Okay. Yep. So, Nate, you wrote this uh, this chapter, and it's basically about how when you were a kid, your parents brought in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different families, probably more, but those are the ones you remember. Yep. There's, a, I think, a total of 28 people. That's incredible. Not at the same time. At the same, the most, I think, in the house at the same time was like... Um, I want to say like 13 or 14 people. It That's was a weird a it was a weird transition. I'll explain yeah. it really quick. Kara and Matt just moved back from Flint and they were renting their house, so they had to shack up at mom and dad's house for a couple months. Mm-hmm. They had a baby. Um Cheryl and Darren, they moved in cuz something with their house was getting built or renovated or something. Mm-hmm. My cousin Eric from Florida was living with us. <laughs> The house was open like 24 hours a day. Like you, I sold a half-eaten steak from Outback Steakhouse to Darren for $13. Oh once. my gosh, that's good profit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird time, but it was so fun. It was yeah. so fun. And um, looking back, I mean, it was just so many funny memories from all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they had a ton of people living with us, and and they were just very kind and gracious with their home, like mm-hmm. just always willing to put somebody in there. Yeah, which is wild to think about. Yeah, you talked about in the book, in this, it's either in this chapter or maybe I'm just remembering it from conversation about how God basically told your dad, like, it's not your house, it's my mm-hmm. house. Yeah, that yeah. that was this chapter. Dad yeah. pulled in and, like, the Lord just kind of, yeah, exactly that. He said, it's my house, Rodney. Yeah. You're to maintain it, is what my dad said. So good. I was oh, like, oh man. my gosh. Yeah. So Nate writes down uh, three, basically, he walks through, like, how their family operated in kindness and how they were very generous with their home, um, not propping themselves up or anything, but just being like, they were they were allowing themselves to be inconvenienced. And so then he kind of goes through like, sharing our home and our life with others taught me these three things. First, be the kindness of Christ. Second, opportunities always present themselves. And third, God hears us when we pray. And then Nate goes through each thing. So the first one is be the kindness of Christ. And dude, I think that's a big deal because I think a lot of times we, um, well, one, there's almost a concept of we're comparing it to letting people live in your home. Yeah. Which, which is, is a huge. One of the most inconvenient oh, things. Dude. And then, and that's a huge leap, mm-hmm. you know, but I think like, like to be the kindness of Christ, there's that verse that where it says that it's the kindness of Christ that leads men towards repentance. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, kindness it, there is like uh, an inconvenience to it, yeah. as small as it is to as large as it can be. There, you can find the inconvenience of it, but I, I want to think that we all have it in us. We all have it in us to be kind, to slow down and mm-hmm. look up and look around and and find the opportunities. Yeah, I agree. Well, there <laughs> you go. Um, one thing you wrote down is. Uh, what is it to be the kindness of Christ? It's consistent, non-situational, and it defies logic. It means we don't look at a situation using a meter to calculate what it cost us. Kindness. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like, <clears throat> that's really what it is. Is like kindness is not using a meter. It's like you see a need, and you're not so worried to check your bank account before you give the need. You know what I mean? Where you're like, somebody's like, I need help, and you're not thinking... 
well, let me check my account first to see if I can help you. Yeah. You're like, I, you just do it. You know what I mean? Not to be irresponsible, but there's a, there's just a different level of, um, being selfless yeah. towards yourself so that you can be care so that you can care for the needs of another. And I, I think, yeah, they just that, and even too living like in that awareness of like the Holy spirit, like I feel he's never going to tell you, I don't, well, maybe he'll tell you not to be kind. I can't imagine it, but like, <laughs> I think I like want you, you said, to operate <laughs> in not my job. fruit. <laughs> yeah. You know well, that fruit I gave you? <laughs> throw it throw away. away. <laughs> <laughs> no, that like fruit's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you were saying about like the responsibility of like, I do think there's, there's a time maybe, well, not maybe there is a time where the Lord will call you out into unknown waters Yes, of yeah. like none of this is in any way logical and making any sense yeah. and comfortable or convenient. Um, so within that, I think he does allow us, I think, to learn with him mm -hmm. to get there. I mean, for sure, there's going to be times where you're just going right into the deep end with him. Mm -hmm. But I really, it's amazing how the one thing that I've learned over the years is just that phrase I said earlier about stopping and looking up. Mm -hmm. Like we're so noses to the grindstone type idea, like our Monday through Friday, like mm -hmm. just work, 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 work. And then we're just always waiting to get our days off or all this stuff. And, yeah. and we just got our head down and we're just going and opportunities I feel like from God are just blowing by us mm -hmm. and we're not, we don't see any of them. Yeah. That was something I really feel like the Lord is, he's been really working on me with that. Mm -hmm. One thing Lydia and I have started to do without actually even saying it but we if Liddy's watching this she would be like yeah we do that we started doing this thing where anytime somebody asks for money if we have cash we always give them money um no. we don't even if they look like they're about to just take it and go do drugs we just give them money because we've seen how moments of us giving somebody money have opened up so many opportunities for us mm -hmm. to share Jesus with them that to me, I'm like giving you $5 is worth sharing the gospel. Like your soul is worth more than $5 so I can give you $5. Dude. So we've started to like, uh, we, after your book party, this book launch, <laughs> we walked out to our car. Somebody walked up to us. It's freezing cold outside. This usually doesn't happen in Port Huron, but somebody walked up to us and they said, they said, I'm really hungry. Um, do you have money for food? Um, and she was wearing a relatively nice jacket and I'm thinking, I don't know if you're hungry, <laughs> but logic. that's logic, right? Kicks you in. start to analyze, assess, is this person worth my kindness? Mm -hmm. And through probably reading enough Bob Goff books, Lydia and I are both <laughs> like, everybody's worth the kindness. Yeah. Everybody's worth love. Um, and so if somebody asks us, we're just going to do it. And so now anybody watching this, they're going to be like, Hey, you think gonna, can I have a hundred dollars? Luckily we're millennials. We rarely carry cash. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> I'm just going to buy one of those little cubes I can put in my phone. Like I get five bucks. Can I, give I don't have cash. Well, actually yeah, just, you can just, you can Apple just pay boop, me boop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but that's like something I've, we've tried to do not just because it impacts other people, but it impacts us. It makes us more consciously aware um, where before we used to be very quick to just be like, no, I don't have money because yeah. panhandling, whatever, like you, you have this idea that they have alternative motives dude. And it's like, what if that person really is hungry? And mm -hmm. what if that person is Jesus right now? You know? Yes. You know, something else here. So I, I thought this one time I, I, I would never, uh, there's, there's people that we all know that if they asked us for five bucks or 10 bucks, you'd give it to them without questioning any of their motives. Mm -hmm. So why are we so quick to assume and to so quick to like fill in holes of to other people's motives that just are based off of the appearance? You yeah. know, it's like, I would never like if, you know, be like, well, you're just going to waste it. They're going to go and I'm going to give them a hundred dollars and they're going to waste it. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's a good example. Go, we'll go, go with that. Go. So we were just in Florida a couple of weeks ago. We were driving. A guy walked up to our car. We were three lanes in at a light. He walked he just, up to our yeah. car and was like, do you have money? And it's like, here you go. <laughs> like, like, yeah, this is, yeah. So we gave him. So, but it was funny. Um, I looked at his shoes. But, well, as he was walking up, I was like, those are like $150 Jordans. 
So when he's like, I'm hungry, do you have food? Do you have money? I'm just thinking, I want, I want to be like, nice Jordans, bro. I, like, I also enjoy sneakers, and I know the worth of your sneak Jordans. A peek at those. Yeah, and it was funny because I immediately started judging him based off of his sneakers yeah. and his clothes, thinking, yeah, you're just going from car to car to car, mm-hmm. just making your living, whatever, and thinking, like, you're not homeless, you can totally work, whatever, all the judgmental thoughts. And then after the fact, I started thinking, really, I think God was kind of convicting me of thinking of just saying like, what if his dad bought him that shoes, Mm -hmm. those shoes? Like what if those shoes are significant and it's not just he saved up? What if somebody gave him those shoes? What if someone like you drove on, said, here, take my shoes? For and, real. You know what I mean? We, fi- we start oh, filling dude, in gaps so like true. what you're saying, and we start just it's the logic. assuming it's, yeah. it. And yeah, it kind Jesus, I love how Jesus acted the same whether you were a Roman soldier, whether you were a rich man, mm-hmm. whether you were a poor man. It's like he he is no respecter of persons, yeah. right? There are, everybody is the same everybody to him. Everybody's the same. You know? Dude, and I think with those moments, when you stop and you look around, it's like that's when the, like the opportunities come. Like... Even when we did the the our party the other day, and I read that one story about the French fries from Jesus that it's was in this a complete chapter. fail. But like, do you want to summarize that? I st- I gave French I st- I somebody was broke down on the side of the road. I had a great <laughs> idea that I thought the kids needed French fries. I bought fries, but some got back. They were gone. It was embarrassing. I see your I car's all- broken down. <laughs> Let me get you some Let French me, fries. Do you want some French fries? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best part is you didn't have the French fries no. with you. I you were like, them. I'm going to go out of the way. Let me just go get some but French fries. In reality, you could have stopped him and like, do you need a ride? Do you need help to go get another car? Yeah, or no, I was like, <laughs> you guys don't actually need help. What you need <laughs> is French fries. It's awesome. So you stop and you like do these things, but like, there's this learning curve. I, for me, there's a learning curve in the realization that I don't stop. Like, I don't even know how to be kind intentionally in an area that I don't, I don't ever go in. Mm -hmm. And then how many opportunities that we miss because we're just in that hustle or in that, you know, we we don't slow down just to look around and find an opportunity. We have an idea that I had an idea for so long that like God was going to, if, if God brought it to me, Mm -hmm. then, and then I probably wouldn't be ready even if he did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, they present themselves so much, we just miss them mm-hmm. so much because we get so busy. Um, like I, I have a, I feel like I have a lot of stories of different different things that have happened, but I do miss them often. Where the Lord says, "Do this," and I'm, it's too much of an inconvenience, mm-hmm. and I don't. And then afterwards, the Lord's just like, "So you want to change the world? How's that going for you? Yeah. You just had an opportunity and you didn't take it." But anyway, so I had this this. I was leaving the gym one day and I was driving and I'm driving. And in my peripherals, I see this girl running. It was outside of Arby's. um, And she's running on the grass, chasing a bus. And I just, I see it. I'm just thinking, Oh man, that's you ain't going to catch it. (laughs) (laughs) He passes the bus. I was just like, Oh, well, it was so funny. I, like I saw it and I, I just thought to myself like, man, that stinks. And then in this is kind of this, I guess this is where my brain works because I'm pretty cautious is I thought to myself, I can't go back and help her because if, if anybody saw me as like a pastor picking up a woman, that's not my wife, they're going to assume the worst. I have a story about that. Okay. You tell the story. So basically the Lord was like, you help her. Like, like how Jesus went out to the woman caught in adultery. Right. It's like anybody could have assumed something. Oh, well, he was one of her lovers. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, it's like yeah. he he stepped into messy situations. Mm-hmm. And so anyways, the Lord was just like, go back and pick her up. It will take you five minutes. And so I whipped around and I, and I got, I was in the main drag. So there's cars everywhere. And I'm just rolled the window down. I'm like, do you need a ride? <laughs> And she's like, what? And I'm just like, do you need a ride? I saw you chasing the bus. Do you need a ride? And she gets in my car and then she gets a, she gets in the car. And the first thing I want to say is, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> the door. In, my, in my head, I was thinking, this is kind of, ter- you just got wild. in a random dude's car. Like I was just thinking, what in the world? But yeah. And I just wanted to like... <laughs> 
I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my brain goes. I've seen too many movies where Logic. it's just like, yeah, I've where it's seen like a lot of movies. I'm sure you're wondering that there's I'm going to kill you. <laughs> there's a man who's been following you for five blocks. He's wearing glasses, yeah. a parka, <laughs> and a fedora. It's Get a in. good thing you found me. It's like you just want to make up someone's life an action movie. So, anyways, I take her to Kroger. She's like, I was trying to get to Kroger. I drive her to Kroger and, um, and she's like, thank you so much. I'm a mm-hmm. single mom. If I would have missed that bus, I wouldn't have been able to get my groceries for my kids. Dude, and I was see, just thinking, dude, are you kidding me? And it, I already had to drive by Kroger. Right. I think sometimes we assume that the inconvenience is going to be far more inconvenient yeah. than it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people who are in need of help really aren't going to ask that much of you. No. You know, so it was that was like a great reminder when I dropped her off. It was like the Lord was just like, you can. And I called Lydia right afterwards. I was like, just so you know. <laughs> Heads up. I picked a girl up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, it's not, what, it's not what it sounds like. I picked a girl up, took her to Kroger because she needed groceries for her children. Yeah. <laughs> I want to share Tell this. your story. I, this story is crazy. I can't wait to hear this. I feel like it's going to be. It's nuts. I was driving. It's giving me the exact opposite. The Don't exact everyone opposite. This picks. Is exactly, <laughs> this is the other this end the of the other stick. Side. I was driving to get Kate for lunch one day, and this lady was walking down the side of the road. I'm like, she must have run out of gas, trying to get to Wadhams. I pick her up. So I'll drop her off at the gas station. I pick her up. Start driving down the road. Hey-oh. It's a prostitute. Hey-oh. Hey-oh. <laughs> Let's Plot go. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I just rem- I, will, I won't forget it. How do you know? Because she offered her services. She said, "Is there anything I can do for you?" And I was just like, "What no, are you gonna I'm do for me?" You. I'm like, "You're freaking broke down on the side of the road. I just picked you up." So then escalates. I realize what's happening. Oh my! I say, gosh. "No, no, 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 no!" I just pull back over. I'm like, "Get out!" And then I go, "You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this." And then she's getting out, and then she started yelling at me about needing to get her car fixed. And I'm like, you don't have to do this. And then she slams the door and just walks away. I go, <laughs> I go pick Kate up. And I'm just like, Kate gets in the car. Like you said, <laughs> I, picked, I picked up a prostitute today. And I'm just sitting there like, the heck just happened? And Kate's like, hey, how are you doing? I was like, I accidentally picked up a prostitute. Come and get you for lunch. And she's like, what? what? And I'm like, you're I not love, gonna believe this. I love you this. so much, babe. <laughs> I was like, you are not gonna believe this. Oh yeah, my so that gosh. happened to me a long time ago. So I don't know. I mean, it's <laughs> like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> but I was so like, I'm just gonna be kind. So if you're still listening, you're, you're wondering. Still listening, so should I be kind or should I not should, be kind? Just, you should. Yeah, just let them out of the car the, if it goes sideways. But the, don't, here's don't the great part: is if, yeah, even yeah, if it yeah. doesn't go well, you got a yeah. great story. And I gave her some good advice. You don't need to do this, but she didn't. Whatever. So yeah. I think another thing too. <laughs> I don't know how to transition that was out the, of this. One of those. I don't know if we can come back. I from don't know that. how to. Be kind, people. Be, be kind, kind. Rewind. Be kind. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I should have shared I don't know story. if we can go anywhere from here, Nate. <laughs> I think okay. here's the moral of the story. You don't know, dude. Here, yeah. uh, let's bring it back in. You don't know who you're actually going to be kind to. Mom and dad, when they were helping these people out, there were some like messed up situations. Yeah. For real. Like they helped out people. Like when you read, if you read about in the book, like it's crazy that some of the people they were helping. So you never know who you're going to be kind to, but that's the beauty of being kind <laughs> for the sake of the gospel. I, like, I, don't I don't know, know if, I know if I've ever told you that story. <laughs> I don't tell a ton of people except for everybody who's going to watch this. That's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't. I can't, I can't go. I can't right, recover gonna, from I'm it. Gonna take but it from here. here's how. <laughs> how do you, you send you it? You got to be kind, people. You got to be kind. You really do. Look, um, read here, let me. Part. Read this quote. Okay, let's read a quote. Whew, I'm sweaty. That's how nervous. that's how much Well you're then you, here, you took it that. back so quick that I Well I had to. You were Yeah, I was falling apart, but then the more you tried to keep it coming I, back, I was that was I like was uh, not able to right before like I got good It was so, like high speed wobble. <laughs> 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 you, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like, and then Yes. Cut. Okay. Yeah. Well let's leave, let's read the, the quote at 
the chapter mark Nate says this. <laughs> there are times when being kind is convenient. It's easy and it makes sense. But many times being kind is inconvenient, challenging, or completely illogical. So here's how do you send it this okay. week, people. You send it by allowing yourself to be inconvenienced for the needs of another. I agree, Let's man. find somebody this week. Just look around. Keep your eyes open. Yep. There's going to be somebody. Yep. Slow down and look. Mm-hmm. You'll see the opportunity. You'll find it. Yep. And uh, meet their needs. Yeah. Yep. Even, it, even if it's just a uh, hamburger or whatever or prostitute walking. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Nope. Stay vigilant, people. I- you want <laughs> Stay woke. Can't recover from that one. <laughs> okay. I was like, no, 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 no. don't you guys. Those needs. Be sure to subscribe, uh, like it, share Comment, it, do all the stuff. Rate it on. Rate it. Yep. Help this is one out. of our most off the this rails is a good podcasts. One. It's yes. real life, man. The stuff happens. Okay. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you guys. Send it. Send it. <laughs> that story is nuts. Oh.